Thank you. It was a great speech just before me. Can I please ask my panelists to come up? He took most of my material, so I'm going I'm to make this up as I go. So first of all, thanks for everybody uh, hanging around and, and, and giving us an opportunity to hear us out. We've, we promise to make it uh, very exciting and enthusiastic. We've got a great team, a great uh, set of panelists. And, and be before I, I let you hear how, how brilliant they really are, uh, I'd just like to say a few words about a story that I had when, when I was in China uh, but two years ago. I couldn't get over how everybody was so enthusiastic. The staff, the, the person that cleaned the room, the, the, the person that I would see, the concierge, everybody was just bending over backwards to help. And, and, and it was, for me, it was my first time in China. And I asked them, why are you so excited? I'm not used to this. I'm not, I'm not used to seeing this. I've been, I've, been, I've been quite a few places around the world, as you can tell by my accent. But I've never seen this level of devotion and, and service. I mean, you've made my whole experience in China unbelievable. And what they said to me was, because we believe we're going to be rich one day. <coughs> We believe in China that we can all be millionaires. We believe that if we work hard and we do well, there will be another role for us. And, and I thought it was really exciting because we talk about the big conversation. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's coming to a close in six months. 67,000 opportunities. And, and I would say it's 67,000 where it's changed people's lives. You, we heard today as the people came up, the young people came up, and to me that was probably the most inspirational uh, feeling, hearing about someone that's come through, someone that's been given an opportunity, and somebody that has a passion for this industry. And it's going to end in six months. And we know that over half the chefs vacancies can't be filled. We're almost a victim of our own success. We're growing this industry, and we're actually creating more problems for ourselves and finding the right people. So what we're going to be talking about today is what do we do next? How do we recruit not jobs, but careers for people? How do we want them to line up? How do we make them line up so that we don't have to create the big conversation? that there's, there's lineups out our doors of people that really understand and are passionate and want to be a part of what we've all come to know, love, and are passionate about. So that's really what about this session's about. Why don't I ask you, Tom, to introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about yourself. OK, thank you, George. Um, so my name is Tom. Uh, I've been passionate about this hospitality business for over 26 years. And actually, when I started 26 years ago, I was already an MD. So uh, actually, Metro Hotel. In English, MD, <laughs> Metro D. Yeah. And I'm very proud because 26 years later, I'm still an MD. And I'm an MD who's overseeing over 220 properties, but even more important, who is working together with over 10,000 passionate people giving great service every single day. Trust me, when I sit with GMs or anyone who is asking me, how did you get here? I said, it's very simple. If you're not passionate about this business, go and find another one. So that's me. Thank you. Anne? Hello, everyone. Well, I've been involved in the industry for 30 years or more. And the last 18 and a half of those, I've been leading the Springboard Charity, Springboard UK. And I've been doing that because I really want to make a difference to young people's lives. <clears throat> I want to also make a difference to unemployed adults, and particularly those that face disadvantages, and encourage them into an industry which I think offers the most amazing opportunities for people to enter, to grow in and progress. But also, I'm really passionate about promoting this industry as a great place to work. And I know from all of the work that we do in schools, in colleges and universities with job centres, that we can do that. We can really inspire more people 
into our industry. Thank you. Thank you. Heiko. Good. How do you top this? 26, 30 years. I'm You're quite a, a baby. I'm just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I've got quite as many of that. I'm a hotelier. I've done this all my life. Um, and I hopefully continue to do it for the rest of my life as well. Although I've moved over to the dark side now, I'm actually working in private equity. So um, <laughs> I'm not quite involved in the operation running of the, the hotel business anymore. So I, 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 my, I come from a slightly different side now. Although I have to say, being involved with this initiative that, we just, that we're talking about here wasn't much of a choice because any of you who know Patrick Dempsey, when Patrick calls, you better go there, wherever he wants you to go to. So when Patrick actually called and said, look, I want to talk to you about um, um, this initiative that I'm thinking of getting involved in, uh, it was more a question of how quickly could I get there because you don't upset the man. But what I did find is that um, it, just, it just resonated very well with me. It's something that I'd believed in all of my career. I was very fortunate to have worked with some great mentors that, um, that I still look up to now, quite frankly. And I was hoping to be able to make a, some sort of an impact and help perhaps others into the industry. Uh, just very quickly, if I may, before I take up 23 minutes and seven seconds of your time, but I have a, I have a daughter, a, a grown-up daughter, she finished her university degree, and like most when you come out of university, what the hell do you do then? She had absolutely no idea what she wanted to do. And hospitality, funny enough, even though I seem to have paid for everything in her life, her young life, was never on her radar. Interestingly enough now, she works for one of the large hotel companies, and she works for them, and she loves it. The only reason why she does love it, because she found some great mentors, she found an internship that she really enjoys, and she has now seen a part of an industry that we all believe in all our lives, but had never been on her radar. Mm -hmm. uh, talking to the people today and seeing some of the young people stand up here today, well, it's uh, pretty much of a no-brainer as to why we're doing what we're doing here. Okay, thank you. So, Thomas, the first question for you is, is clearly, as an MD, and, and an MD for quite some time, uh, this is a very important issue to you. Why is it so important to you? Okay, first of all, it's not an issue. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's not an issue. So let me tell you. Um, first of all, when, when my, uh, my PR director came to me, she said, Thomas, you're going to be on a panel. I said, not again. And she said, uh, but wait a minute, it's one about people. I said, get me on there. Because um, why is it so important? Let me give you three stats. Three statistics, and I'm not going to bore you with numbers, um, but the first one, and that's probably the one I'm most proud of, is that 70% of my general managers today started at entry level. 70% in the business and built their career from entry level. That's a fact. 65% of our workforce today are millennials, the young people, who trust me have a different way of looking at things, who are very innovative, very creative, and very inspiring, and sometimes even more than ourselves. And the last stat I would like to share with you is that pretty much every single member of my executive committee, apart from one, but we're not perfect, has started at entry level. When I share that with these young people, um, it is a fact, it's a story, and it's a true story. So. I would say the fact that we open pretty much, and that's in all our industry, a hotel every two days. And that average-wise, a hotel needs, all depending on how big it is, about 20 to 50 people. Yeah? We are going to need those millennials, and they're basically going to be the future of our hospitality. Um, I tend to call it positive hospitality, because you build teams out of I would say, ideal recipe out of three kinds of diversities. It's gender, it's age, it's culture, and it's nationalities. And that's why we need to keep investing, whether the big conversation comes to its end or not, we need to continue this, um, this initiative. You can do it through different ways. We all invest in management development programs. We invest whether it's national or international. We, uh, we opened three years ago a physical academy. and. Uh, Thank you, Patrick, again, because in 2012, I remember I came to you and I said, can I please be part of this big conversation besides the different programs that our company does? And he says, please be welcome. So thank you, Patrick. Well done. Well done. And, and Anne, I have a question for you. Uh, are you sad the big conversation is coming to an end in six months? And, and, and what's next? Well, in a way, yes. 
Um, but I think in order to sort of go on to what's next, we just need to reflect a little bit on what the big conversation has actually achieved. And, you know, we set out to try and raise the profile of the industry and um, encourage young people into the industry and take the opportunities. We set out to try and encourage employers the length and breadth of the country to offer more quality work experience, to offer more apprentices, to um, really focus on um, filling their job vacancies with local young people. Um, and we also set about, I suppose, furnishing BHA with the ammunition that they needed to go to government and say, look, take this industry seriously. Um, we're doing a huge amount to tackle the issues that are of great importance to you, namely at the time youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, with, so we, through the, I don't know how many, 40, 45. 45 big conversations that we will have had by the, by the end of the campaign, we have brought together thousands of industry leaders, of young people who were, <clears throat> you know, unemployed or who were undecided on where they were going to go next and given them that opportunity, whether that has been doing work experience, whether it has been starting off an apprenticeship, or whether it's been actually getting a job. And we've got lots and lots and lots of examples from Inverness right the way down to um, Cornwall and Devon of people who've, who've experienced that. So, you know, it's been a great thing to be part of it. And, uh, you know, we have, I think, created a buzz around it. But what do we do next, Anne? Well, what we do next is some, some things have changed. So youth unemployment has gone down, but we still want to encourage people in. Um, but I think what we need to do is get behind a whole range of initiatives that are out there and, and put our weight behind them and all, you know, sort of help those things achieve what, what they do. So we, we were talking earlier about chefs. The industry's biggest skill shortage is in the kitchen. Yet... Out there, we've got initiatives from primary school right the way through to colleges and beyond and in the industry, loads, loads of things going on. The Royal Academy of Culinary Arts with their Adopt School programme, Springboard's own Future Chef programme in secondary schools, your own highly successful yes. top door um, that we were at on, on Friday, and delighted that that's now going to be opened up to apprentices. You know, those initiatives form a whole natural talent pi pipeline from primary school right the way through to industry. And through all of those initiatives, we have alumni who are now working in the industry. But if we're going to really make these initiatives achieve their potential, we've got to unite behind, behind them. And I've only just mentioned chefs as a whole range of other things. We also, you know, since the big conversation started, other things have happened. We've got the trailblazer apprenticeships, we've got the levy coming in and, and, and all of that. And we need to unite behind uh, people first who are uh, leading on the trailblazers. Um, I think Steve Cast is in the audience, who's the chairman of the Hospitality Guild. He, you know, through the Hospitality Guild, you're uniting all of the skills bodies to have this coherent pipeline of activity that will help us to, I suppose, take forward the legacy that the big hospitality conversation has created, and we can rely on BHA to keep banging the drum in government circles. Thank you, Anne. And, and Heiko, you, you mentioned you, you crossed over to the dark side into private <laughs> equity. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's private equity, uh, how, how is a skills shortage, how does it affect the way you look at uh, possible uh, acquisitions, and why is it so important to you? Um, Look, um, when, we, when, we, when we're about to acquire a business, when we look at a business, then clearly a number of factors play into it. It's got to show a decent return because otherwise you'd be wasting your money investing there. But more often than not, particularly when we look at operational businesses, I think those of us who've been involved in the industry, I think you only need to walk through a door of a hotel and you can somehow sense whether there's a culture of training and development taking place. It's possibly the way you're being greeted. It's possibly the service experience that you have, whatever it may be, you could just sense it. As far as private equity is concerned, look, it does matter to us because we want to buy businesses that are operationally fit, that we can see the future with, and that looks after its own people. And what a great way to start by actually looking after the young people that you employ in the business. So, yes, it does make a difference to us. It makes a big difference to us. And we would want to see evidence that training and development is pretty high up on the list of HR activities of a business that we're thinking of acquiring. Thank you. Thomas, you, you, you seem to, to really have the, the, 
the, the entry level and the career planning and succession planning nailed down. So you must have a lot of stories that have really made you proud about watching people come up. Is there anything that comes to mind, moments that you're most proud of with this initiative? Um, yeah, because whether the big conversation um, stops or doesn't stop, um, I mean, the business or the industry has invested in me for 26 years. The least I can do is, is give that back. So um, I just want to share with you a very, a very tiny story and experience I had. Uh, it was actually at the end of last year. And I was invited to a convention in, in France. That's Europe. Um, and I was invited to a convention. And the afternoon session was about meeting uh, young entrepreneurs, startup businesses. So I met this, this, this young man, his name was Michael, and uh, I introduced myself. I said, I'm Thomas, I'm Managing Director, MD. Uh, MD. Yeah. And he that said, gets your attention. I know, I know, <laughs> but wait a minute. And he said, he was about 23 years old. He said, uh, I'm Michael and I'm CEO. <laughs> so, I mean, I needed 26 years to be an MD and he's a CEO. So seriously, I mean, that, 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 that does demand, you know, he, he, the guy had balls, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So I asked him, so what do you do? And he said, well, I just started my new business. And um, uh, to, in short, it's, it's a website who helps you to optimize as a businessman or woman, your uh, leisure, the time you have some, you know, time for leisure, that you can combine it. So never mind, that's not so important. And I said, uh, oh, okay. And so how many people work in your business? And he said, well, I'm on my own. Well, okay, so he's CEO, he's on his own. And, but I said, wait a minute, sooner or later, that's going to be copied. Someone is going to take this. And someone is going to buy it from you. And I said, what are you going to do then? He's 23 years old. And he said to me, well, you know what, Thomas? When that happens, I'm just going to start another business. So my point here is that I'm coming back to these young employees. The big conversation for me is not just about attracting or recruiting or retaining and giving them a career. I think they have to give something to us also. And that's what I've recently started. Um, and I call it, in a way, I followed an idea from my CEO. I call it the shadow comics. So I'm, I'm in the process of creating a team of 10 to 15 people, young people, millennials. I insisted. I can tell you my ex -com, they weren't so happy. Say, what, we're no good anymore? I said, I didn't say that. They're going to work with us with the executive committee for one year on one of our main strategic topics. And I said, work together. We might have the experience, but they have the great ideas. So this is a way for me to continue a little bit the principle of the big conversation, attracting young people, but using their innovative and creative minds to disrupt ourselves, trust me, at our thinking at the top. So um, that's at least my pledge. For today. I mean, that there's enough, amazing. Well, it's but there's enough evidence that you do that anyway. So, as a matter of routine within your organization, we used to, the reason why I'm saying this is because we used to own aqua properties. Um, um, so, we're very much in the know as to how aqua actually fosters his talent out there. But I just, I just well, one of the things that I just observed today, I mean, where these guys that are presented here today that opened up the sessions, I mean, credit to you people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so young and so confident to be able to stand up here and to be able to speak to 500 people of our industry of some seniority and to present your stories to well. And so the one bit that I took away from all of it is saying that I think you're quite happy to be employed in this industry and you quite like to see a career in this industry and you're pleased that you're actually involved in it, that you work in that. So if ever we wanted to know what we're doing this, well, there was enough evidence of that earlier today. I think you, you bring out a point that the big hospitality conversation gave a platform to young people yes. because every single big hospitality conversation was compared by young people Absolutely. who'd done work experience, who'd done the print, you've got, you know, been there, done there, got the T-shirt. And they were the most inspiring. You got quite emotional, didn't you? <laughs> it did indeed, yeah. it did. But none of that needs to stop well, just I, because I, I we're just don't think it is. I, not I, calling I, it the big no, hospitality conversation. Thomas, uh, Thomas will certainly continue. You know, I know you will do that. I know that uh, Premier Inn, we've seen enough evidence of that. Their development program is just outrageously good. That's not going to stop. Hilton, you name it, the IHGs of this world, they're all buying into it. I think we have a little bit but more. But also, of the small businesses that, that, that are. I'm just going to go there. And that was, I think, for me, that was the most revealing bit. Mm -hmm. We saw 3,500 businesses. Um, we had five, five, 
a little bit over 5,000 kids attend or young people attend these big hospitality conversations. And what really struck me how SMEs are actually buying it, is saying, yes, there is a way of actually dealing with this. And yes, we perhaps need to be a little bit more structured in our work placement. Mm. And it is pro probably a good idea to have apprentices actually work alongside us to help us with our skill shortages out there. So, and I think that will continue. I don't think that yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, what, what we've done is created a, a sort of momentum. Yes. People who, I, I know organizations that hadn't done any work experience before before, didn't do apprenticeships before, right. and now as a result of the big conversation are doing it. And they're not planning to and stop the doing that. To be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the good thing what I'd like to add is that, um, I'm sorry I might be a bit confronting, but after this morning I, I, I felt a bit depressed, I must say. Because um, we're on a great business, and the only thing which has been going through my mind, but many of our minds, of course because of the Brexit, is all the probably things which are going to happen to us, because nobody knows. Yeah? But the thing we do know yeah, is exactly what we've been doing with the big conversation is that we have a great industry. Mm -hmm. We have great jobs. I, I can't even count how many different kind of jobs we have in our business. And um, I, I think we need to be less modest and even more showing off our business. Yeah. Um, we don't talk enough about it. We tend to be thinking that everybody knows. Um, and, and, and a very small example I have myself in my training academy, I remember I had hours of discussions with an interior designer. We're going to do red, we're going to do blue, we're going to do red, we're going to do blue. I said, no, we're going to have one big wall and I want every year pretty much 20 or 25 GMs with their face, with their hobby, with their CV, because we have all our 10,000 employees going through that academy once a year. Show off that you've become a GM. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, You've there's got nothing wrong with organization, huh? PR, interior design, and all that good stuff. Well, I mean, if you grow every day, we can invest in different jobs. So, uh, yeah. speaking I've of so, speaking of you've showing off, seen that wall. you've seen Brilliant. the wall. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I've, seen, I've, 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 I've stolen the idea for our website. It's amazing. Speaking of, amazing. Sh yeah, speaking of showing off, uh, if I, if you could allow me uh, one small plug. Uh, Nestle Professional spends about five hundred thousand pounds a year putting on contests. Uh, we've just launched the Apprentice of the Year, and it crosses all the businesses. We 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 have the College uh, Top Door of the Year, College Chef of the Year. We we sponsor uh, the Scotty uh, uh, Chef of the School Chef of the Year. So uh, use us in other uh, suppliers. Put your people forward. Put your apprentices forward. We'll bring them to Dorchester and we'll hold them up. We'll put them on the stage. We'll give them trophies. Let us show off your people. Uh, that, that would be my one plug. So uh, I'm going to send it out there. We've got any questions before we wrap it up. Timing is tight, I believe. We have a, a, a very important speaker coming up next. You're all tired now. They're all very passionate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're just all taking it in still. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Well, just a quick one then. Do you think that we do, as an industry ourselves, a disservice by publicly saying how worried we are about the living wage? Should we privately worry about it, but in public keep our traps shut? Yes. I, yes. I, well, I didn't say I was worried about it. I think we should be going out there and showcase our industry is a great place to work because it is. Um, and, you know, people say to me, oh, everyone thinks it, it's the last resort. It's not. I mean, we go out to, to talk to schools and colleges and universities and job centres on a day in, day out basis. And we've also done research to find out what do young people think about our industry? And over half think it's a really positive place to work. And we I just have to do more to tell them about all the opportunities because that's the thing they don't know. They don't know about all of the things that are out there. The many jobs that Thomas was um, referring to, doesn't know how many different jobs. Are. There's so many different things that you can do in our industry. People need to be going out and shouting about it. And you know, the more we can get people who are passionate about their jobs going out and talking to young people while they're making the decisions, the more likely they are then to come into the industry. Yeah, but, but, but you're right. I mean, we're just lousy at actually being advocates of our own industry. Look, what has changed so dramatically over the last few years? 
You know, we talked about that our industry has unsociable hours. Well, guess what? You work anywhere in the high street, you work Saturdays or Sundays. Shop opening hours getting later and later. And we as an industry are saying, look, we're no different than any of these other industries. We just kept quiet about it. We have this wonderful habit of kicking ourselves up the backside. And we've got to stop doing this. We've got to take a little bit more pride in it. The national minimum wage has an impact on our businesses. Believe me, it does. It, and I think, as some of the speakers said today already, is it right to pay it? Absolutely. There's no question about it. And actually, we're not complaining about it. What we're complaining about is all that other stuff that's come with it at the same time and the phasing of all of it. But we've got so much positivity in our industry that we should really get out there to advocate that this is the industry that you wish to be involved in, frankly. And, and again, focus on the 70% mm. of these uh, people at entry level who started with a minimum living wage and became a general manager. Like you. Isn't, isn't that the proof? Isn't that the proof? Right. Yeah. The yeah. proof is not only where you start, it's also where you can get. And that's what we've proven. So. But I think the other thing is to capitalize now on all of the apprenticeship movement. And, you know, we yeah. should be offering many, many more apprenticeships for our industry. Um, because so that's a really good clear. progression. Before the apprenticeship levy was actually even thought about, we already entered, weren't we? We already took apprentices in. We are already actually recruiting them into our businesses. So I think we can Ooh. quite rightly... And we know that because we started the big conversation in before... Absolutely, in 2012. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your question. And, and thank you, my distinguished panelists. Thank uh, you, George. Thank you, thank George. You. You finished? Okay.